we have the pleasure of having today with us uh, Mr. Tunku Baradayaran, a research fellow in journalism at the Hoover Institution. Uh, he is going to, to share his views on Narendra Modi uh, administration. So welcome uh, to our institution, Mr. Baradayaran. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know, I would like to know your, your insight. Um, to what extent Narendra Modi is fulfilling the great expectations that were uh, put on him regarding his capacity of reforming uh, India's economy? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think you're, you're right to say that the expectations are or were great. In fact, great doesn't even begin to describe <laughs> them. The expectations were m monumental. Uh, has he fulfilled them? Uh, clearly not so far. He's only been in power for you know, 10 months so far. Uh, he said when he won his election that you need to give me 10 years. Uh, so we're a very long way away from the period that he had assigned to himself for the completion of all expectations. Uh, however, what he has done so far has been not entirely encouraging. Mm -hmm. He, uh, you know, his, his, his electoral platform was a combination of things, but the economic dimension was that he would bring much needed uh, reforms to the Indian economy, which had, uh, you know, stagnated under the previous administration, under, uh, you know, a, a combination of corruption, loss of vision, as well as the general global stagnation had brought India's growth rate down from rates of sort of 8% to something much more humdrum and humble. Uh, Modi promised to take them back up to 7.98 again. Uh, he hasn't made any concrete reforms to date. Uh, they've obviously they've, they've start, he started to tinker with some of the restrictions on foreign investment. Uh, he started to cut at some of the red tape, but he's very very far from doing anything radical. Uh, actually, maybe uh, in a few months he will have a good chance uh, to give more encouraging signs because the new uh, national budget yeah. is going to be released. I don't know what do you think about that. What can we expect on this uh, national budget? Well. Um, you know, the expectations, as I said, are great. Uh, I don't think we can expect any panacea or any uh, silver bullet from the budget. Uh, the budget is really a distraction. You know, these are, these are reforms that can be made at any time of the year. They don't have to wait for the budget to happen. Uh, what we will see, what we hope to get from the budget, however, is a clear statement of intent, a clear declaration of principles, if you like. Uh, so yes, I think the budget will tell us whether he's, he intends to be serious about economic reform or not. But the details can come at any time. They don't have to be uh, tied or tethered to the budget in any way. Okay. And Modi is coming to Europe in a few months, I think in April. Uh, and he's, he's supposed to visit uh, Germany and France. Uh, do you think that uh, because of his strong leadership, you know, he is more, let's say, um, pro-business uh, orientation, do you think that this is actually a good chance for boosting uh, EU-India uh, relationships? Absolutely. I think, you know, um, he has two, Modi has two things on his mind. One is national security, Indian national security, and the other is in the Indian economy. In, 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 in many ways, the two are linked because, you know, India needs to modernize its defense forces and in order to be able to pay for a modernized defense, it needs to be making money. Uh, and in order to make money, it needs to improve its economy. So he's coming to Germany and France looking for investment, looking for weapons, looking for uh, support for India's uh, increased global projection. I think one of the one of the uh, one of the things that he would like and previous administrations have always wanted uh, is for India to get a permanent seat on the Security mm -hmm. Council of the United Nations. So he'd be looking for French and German support for that. Of course we know that the Germans would also like that for themselves. Uh, but yeah, I think this is this is a major bridge building exercise with the EU. Uh, Customarily, India's relations with the EU have been channeled through Britain mm -hmm. for obvious uh, reasons, <coughs> uh, historical reasons. But India has very close ties to France. Uh, it, 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 it procures a lot of its uh, defense supplies from France. Uh, the Russians are the biggest suppliers, but the French are not that mm -hmm. far behind. Um, and Germany, of course, is, 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 is coveted as a source of investment. Modi, uh, one, of, one of his promises is to increase the uh, level of manufacturing in India. It's only 14% of the Indian economy, which is, which is abysmally low for a country of its size, for a country that needs to produce at least a million jobs a month in order to keep pace with population growth. So the only way you can do that is by increasing the manufacturing base. And India has a very low manufacturing base right now, so it, it, it is in search of investors. Well, so let's hope that uh, Modi keeps diversifying 
India's relationship with Europe, and maybe next time he will come to Spain. You know, <laughs> I, you know, India and Spain have a lot they 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 can learn from each other about. Yeah, and Spain, the, the Spain's strengths are in tourism and infrastructure and uh, you know al alternative sources of energy, all all of which are of great interest to India. I think Spain has a lot that it can contribute to the Indian economy and to the Indian way of life. Thank you very much for sharing your view with us today. You're welcome. My pleasure.